what's the best way to position your company to ride out the hard times and be ready for the next boom period? Do you want to start with, we can start with Mary Beth. Sure. I mean, I think that's a great question. And that is the question that's most important. And, in, and again, from, you know, a real estate perspective in the office market, I think you have to look at both the economic and the non-economic components of that. From the non-economic component, I think that's, <coughs> that's really, um, to me, where you can make the, the, the big difference. And, you know, obviously, historically, you know, people think of rent as an expense. And I, I would just challenge people to say, you know, how do you make your real estate work for you? That sounds very cliche and you see that a lot, but really this is the time where people need to dig down and understand what they're going to be when they come out of this. And I think a lot of companies are doing that now, and I would challenge them to be a little bit more scientific than when they figure that out, and they're starting to figure that out, how that translates into their space. You know, retailers have always been very good about figuring out, you know, where are their customers coming from, what are their demographics. Office, to that extent, really hasn't done that. So figuring out, you know, who are your customers, how are your um, employees connecting with each other and then putting that into their um, into their space. I think from the economic benefits, I would probably, I know John's seeing, and I'm seeing it too, in terms of tenants asking for these shorter terms, but really I think there exists an opportunity for companies that know themselves to really um, take care of a, um, or not take care of, but just a very good opportunity for them to take advantage of the market. If you look at the, you know, particularly the larger blocks of space right now, we do have good quality supply of space that's out there. Landlords are aggressive, considering that we've had a lack of construction that's coming, you know, going to be coming online farther out when this thing does start to turn around. Those those users are going to be limited in their options and they're going to be more expensive. So, I would think that would um, I would would challenge people that if they are stable and their you know, understanding and knowing what they are and how to position themselves against their competition, that they can then translate that into um, their office space. Well, I think first of all, it's, it's presumptuous to uh, assume that there's going to be another boom time uh, in the near future. Uh, most reports I've seen indicate we can expect slow growth uh, once the economy does turn around. Uh, and unemployment's not projected to return to um, a stabilized 5% range until sometime in 2013. You know, the, the, the greatest hockey player ever to play, Wayne Gretzky, kind of summed it up best when, uh, you know, why was he so successful? It wasn't that he knew where the, the puck was at that time. He had an innate sense for knowing where the puck was going to be before play even developed. I mean, before anybody could even see what was going on. And I really think that that's what we all need to look at. There's going to be, John's right, I mean, everybody up here is correct. There's still a lot more correction that's going to need to happen. And it's easy for us to focus on, wow, that distribution company just blew out of 800,000 square feet. Um, you know, it, it shocks you. But uh, instead of focusing on you know, the current circumstances, focus on um, where you think things are going to be next and how you position yourself for them. And I'll give one quick example, which is uh, from a development standpoint. I mean, Opus was out in Plainfield gobbling up huge swaths of ground uh, before anybody did as far as you know, really making a commitment to that. Um, I think somebody, though, that demonstrates how they shift themselves, if you look at uh, Browning Investments, uh, really known for developing the office market for a long, long time, made a shift. And man, did he make a great play. That marketplace was, um, from a distribution standpoint, we delivered about 3 million square feet of new development over 15 years and primarily in Plainfield. Uh, just lo and behold, he happened to be positioned such that uh, when we did 7 million square feet and 5 million square feet in 2006 and 2007, who was doing most of that? So focus that way. Where's the puck going to be? Or so. um, I, I think the staying positive helps, but it also it's important to be realistic. And uh, all the great companies, all these development firms that have done well, they had a good start and they had good uh, intentions. And I think, in my opinion, you go back, back to basics. I mean, probably got too sophisticated in some ways, but uh, there's, there's basic rules apply in uh, every business. And I think the ones that are able to get back to that and stay focused what they were good at it and what they did well and, and adjust, cut cost, and uh, they, will, they will survive. And when the market comes back, they'll be in a better position. The ones they don't, um, there won't be a run, and, but there will be more opportunities for the ones who are left. So if you're in a place to actually you can in, hang in there and then uh, at least this year, next year, I think you'll come out stronger. So, but there's also the other good side about the economy is there's, I've never seen that much talent, good talent coming out of these large firms. So for the smaller firms that are growing, 
you know, it's just, it's, it's a hayside. And we just hired the VP of construction. We're looking to hire two, three guys because, I mean, these guys were not available for smaller firms. So it's, uh, it all depends how you look at it. If you, uh, but I think if you go back to basics and stick with the principles, uh, we'll be okay.